welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today he joins us up at Lindley Reservoir, which is a Murfield water, and we're doing like the first in a bit of a challenge series between me and Tom. So he's joined us up here today. He's on a peg just about 20 feet further up the reservoir than me. 20 yards even and uh, yeah we're going to have a little competition today fish six hours and see who can get the biggest weight of fish at the end basically neither of us have seen the venue neither of us have fished it i know a little bit of history about it because there's been a recent festival on it and the weights have been good with skimmers and roach sort of 30 40 pound needed to win um so yeah basically it's, it's going to be a, a pretty simple session i've set up feeder gear tom's on the feeder as well um so it should be fairly even only difference is he's gone down a cereal mix route and i've got fish meal so that might make it a bit interesting but like i say we'll get into the fishing shortly um we'll pretty much run through the rigs and everything when we're fishing so yeah with that best of luck then tom good luck here Don. so we'll get on the pegs now and start fishing i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> let's see what happens good luck pal <laughs> Right, so we're going to make a start now. I'm just going to go for the first cast. And on my 42 metre long line, I'm going to start by putting in five quick feeder fulls. So hopefully Tom's running through what his plan is. Basically, I've gone for two lines here today. I've got a 42 metre line, which I've got two, two rods clipped up for. And I've also got an 18 metre line, which I'm thinking for roach. So I'm just going to let that feeder empty, prepare another. Let's say I have five quick casts. I've got a baited up just in case I can snare one early. But I don't expect that to be the case. So in terms of where we're fishing, I've had a, a bit of a lead around. I've picked a nice range, 42 metres. The bottom's dead clear, but it is incredibly deep. I'd say it's, well, it's an eight count, between an eight and a nine count on a 40 gram feeder. So we're probably talking over 30 feet deep. So I'm packing the feeders really hard and I expect at some point today I'll have to switch to a window feeder as well to keep the fish down. So like I say, we'll get these first five feeder fulls in and then we'll make a start on the 18 metre line. In terms of my bait choices today, I've gone for the usual sort of bream type approach. A few micro pellets, a few grains of corn. I've got some four mil pellets, some two mil pellets, some casters and some dead maggots and obviously dendrobinas as well. So I've covered all my options really. The only thing that I've done is taken a bit of a gamble and gone for a fish meal mix. Right, so here we are. I've got me feeder set up here. Really professional way of doing it, this you see. Twizzle boom. Yeah, man, I know what that does in everything, me. So I've, I've twizzle boomed it, copied it off YouTube. So we've got that. Got it going down to a hook length of fleur of carbon and a size 14 hook. Bought them from shop. Not that Aiden does stuff like that. And then I'm gonna put some bit of ground bait, a uh, bit of chopped worm and some maggot. I'm gonna put some on the hook and cast out and see what happens. Yeah, as you can tell, I know what I'm doing. So, wish me luck. Yes. I'm in. I'm in here, Don. I think. I think it might have come off. Uh, oh no, it's on. Something's on. It's a patch. Deep up patch. Right, so we've made a, a start. I've put a couple of feeder fulls out, out, out on the long line at 42 metres. I've just gone onto the 18 metre line already. I've started to get a run of a few fish. I'm just fishing with a cage feeder at the moment. I started off on the first couple of chucks with a um, one that's loaded at the bottom end, but I found it was plugging too deep in the silt. So I've switched to a nice little flatbed feeder on this, this 18 metre line. And I've already had a couple of perch and a nice roach as well. So on this short line, I'm basically fishing for anything, so I've, I've not put any pellets or corn through the mix. All I've put through it is worms and plenty of casters and a few dead maggots. So trying to be a bit less selective with what I'm putting through the mix. 
and the depth here on a, a 25 gram feeder I've got about seven or eight seconds depth so it's, it's still quite deep it's probably the best part of 15 feet I started off fishing just a couple of dead maggots on the hook and I had a couple of a few rattles and I've come back with no fish each time and then as soon as I've switched to worm and change the feeder to this uh, this flatbed feeder, a lighter feeder, I found that I've been hooking the fish. So at least it shows that even the perch and roach aren't, aren't sort of turned away from a fish meal mix at least. But what it's also making me think is on that long line, the 42 metre line where I've put a few feederfuls in, that probably won't last, so I'll have to, that's a fish on there. on that 42 metre line I reckon it'll be a case of once this dries up that's when I'll go on it I think a couple of feeder falls won't really last that long in here considering how many how many fish are in the peg it's a nice little perch nice little fish there but not really the stamp we're after I'm hoping for a few skimmers and better roach ideally um, with the feeder obviously because I'm getting a few bites I've brought that stop down to pretty much three quarters of an inch now so at least the perch are lip hooking themselves and rather than getting deep hooked and also it gives me a better chance of hitting bites from roach so across my rigs I've pretty much got exactly the same as you'll you'll see me use on using on the hilltop videos so they don't really need explaining too much it's just a standard short guru link twizzle boom couple of stops there and a float stop above it just to bring in the bolt effect if I need so hook lengths are again 018 fluorocarbon and then I've just got Tubertini series 2 size 16s on these So again, I started off fishing fairly negatively with just a few bits of, of loose offerings within the feeder. But very quickly, because there's those small perch about, I've started putting a lot more bait through, so plenty of casters now. And depending how many perch are in the peg, if I think there's a few roach or skimmers, I might start cutting the chop worm out. Indications again straight away. And that's another fish on. Again, another small perch. So what I'll do is I'll keep changing, changing things around. I think I'm going to cut the worm out of the feeder now and just start introducing casters. And I might, may even put the odd grain of corn in as well now, thinking that there might be a few roach and skimmers about. But like I say, for the, the long line, I'm just going to target that purely with skimmers in mind. So pellets, sweet corn, and a few casters. So we'll get this back out there and hopefully, hopefully we continue catching. New, new tactic, folks. Not messing about now. We'll get thirty pound of ropes coming up. Bagging up. Easy this. Get a nice weight here. I'm gonna beat him. Right, so we're into pretty much into the first hour now. It's probably been an hour since we started. And I've just made a change. I've had a good a good sort of 45 minutes fishing the short line at 18 metres, but there's a, a lot of small perch and roach. Pretty much getting a bite every chuck, even fishing double corn on the hook. I can't believe how, how many fish are in front of me. 
So because I don't know the venue, I've actually, I've, what I've decided to do is, is leave that and I've taken that that there's plenty of small fish in that, that shallower, shorter swim. Because I'm going to spend a bit of time fishing the long line now. So as we said when we started, I've started off at 42 metres and pretty quickly I've sacked that in. I've um, decided to bring it back to 30 metres where it's a bit shallower, a bit easier on the cast. And I've basically just put in four or five big feeder fulls, um, full, of the, full of ground bait, full of pellets, four mil pellets, two mils, and a, few, a, a fair few grains of corn as well. So I've put in a good bed of bait down there. And I'm just having the first cast on that now with a window feeder. My thinking is that it might be the case that the skimmers are sat slightly further out. So rather than putting casters and dead maggots through, what I want to try and do is try and, trying to concentrate on those skimmers. So I'm putting through baits that won't be as appealing to the roach and the perch. So especially the perch have been a problem because Tom's had a few, a few missed bites. He's had a couple of fish as well. But the perch are feeding so ravenously, it's, it's hard to get a bait through them. So what I wanted to try and do is have a bit of a, a line where it's more of a sit and wait kind of job and really try and look for those skimmers and bream hopefully. So like I say, I've started on a window feeder. The depth there, it must be best part of 30 if not 40 feet deep. So it is a, a deep old swim, but like I say, I'm, I'm expecting that the, the roach and perch will sit in the shallower water. And as with most of these types of venues, the skimmers tend to be in the deeper water further out. So we'll give this a go for a good half hour or so, keep casting every sort of five, 10 minutes, and we'll see if we can snare one. Right, so this is the first fish on that 30 metre line, and it's a small skimmer. Just had this on four dead maggots. As you can see, I've got a window feeder on. So my thinking there is that I'm able to get the fish down to the bottom, but it's a good sign after probably 10 or 15 casts. I've just kept them on quick casts. I've got a nice little skimmer, and that's what we were after on that line. So hopefully, because I can see Tom's starting to get into, into a few fish now, hopefully if I can get on the skimmers, then I should be able to put a decent weight together. So a bit more of a sitting weight job compared to the short line. Just baiting the hook up. A bit more of a sitting weight job than the short line, but if we're catching better quality fish like that, it'll be worth the wait. So I'm just fishing a, a bigger hook bait on this and I've got a size 14 hook in this case. So I'm fishing probably two thirds of a dendrobina, tipped with a couple of dead maggots. In terms of what I'm putting through the feeder, I'm still going with micro pellets, four mil pellets and corn. Right, well, as you can see, I've changed tactics now. I've just switched to a little maggot feeder, fishing single maggot, uh, and I'm just chucking it a rod length out. Still about 12 foot deep, and I'm getting plenty of bites, so... Um, I'm just gonna keep doing this, try and get a, a lot of smaller fish instead of um, targeting the, you know, the bigger sort of match winners. I can always go back out out there to where all that bait is to fish for bream. I think that's probably where they'll be. But I'm just gonna do this for next hour or so and just try and catch catch what I can basically. Just get another one on. We had some nice roach and I think there might be a few more stampers out there so we'll keep trying. 
try and get a decent net. Maggot doing the damage. Just wondering if it's worth trying to worm, see if there's anything bigger there. I think most of the fish are just about that size, to be honest. Maybe I'll just keep getting the feeder full in every few casts, not every cast. Just keep them on it. Perch, sir. I'm just hoping Aiden's not putting all in this net. Sabotage. Instant now. Well, just perch there. And it's competing for it, so it's telling me there's a lot more as well. Good gin. Slightly better fish. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Nice roach. Nice fish that bobs. Nice stamp roach. Six to eight ounce I'd say. Beauty. So we're into another fish now. And what I've done for the past sort of two hours, I think we've come up to sort of the four hour mark now, is I've been plodding away on this, this 30 meter line. I've sort of discounted the, the 18 meter line because I was getting a lot of small fish and I wanted to really try and figure out how to target the skimmers. And after switching from window feeder back to a cage, and then I've, what I've started doing is slopping up the ground bait to create a bit of a, a cloud as it's falling down, thinking that the fish has sat off bottom and they'll, they'll chase it down. I've actually got into a good run of small skimmers. So I think this could be probably the, the eighth or ninth now. So they're not massive fish, they're not proper bream. But they're a nice stamp and it's, like I say, rather than missing a lot of bites fishing for the small fish, I'm able to just sit and wait, leave a worm on and wait for a slightly better fish to pick it up. 
because I think I've seen that Tom's been catching a few small fish, roach and perch, and he's had a couple of skimmers now, I think. So I've decided to just basically try and chase the, the bigger fish in the peg. I say it makes life a little bit easier as opposed to fishing for, for the small fish like roach and perch on the feeder, where you can end up missing a lot of bites and wasting a lot of time. Whereas with this, I'm able to sit there for about five, 10 minutes each chuck and just wait for a better fish to pick up the hook bait. Best hook bait on this line so far has been pretty much a full dendrobina. And I'm just putting a few bits of corn, a few micros, a tiny bit of chopped worm through the, the feeder. And like I say, putting it through with that sloppier mix that I've just wetted up. Like I say, I think the, the skimmers are following it down rather than feeding aggressively on the, the particles that are on the bottom. I think they're just drifting down and picking up the odd piece. So that seems to be working nicely on that 30 metre line. So again, there's plenty of depth there. I'm saying when we're fishing at about 40 to 42 metres that we started on, it was probably the best part of 30 or 40 foot deep. Whereas here, I think it's more like 20 to 25. So I'm fishing a 40 gram feeder. It's probably, I'd say a seven count for it to hit bottom there. And I did catch a couple of fish using the window feeder, thinking that I don't want to draw small fish into the peg and have any particles coming off. But as it turns out, it looks like the, the roach and perch don't really want to sit in that depth of water, which is ideal. So it means that I'm not getting pestered with missed bites and lots, lots of little plucks on the tip. I can just sit there and, like I say, wait for a proper indication. So I've had an indication there pretty much 30 seconds after the feed has hit bottom. And that's what I'm hoping with this method, that the fish will, like I say, come down and take the bait pretty quickly after the feed has gone in. They've just sort of sat in that cloud and following it down. Again, what I don't want to do is fish it for too long, fishing the, slop, the uh, sloppy ground bait mix, just in case it encourages the fish to stay off bottom. But I think every so often it's worth having a, a few casts like I say, trying the slopped up mix and seeing if they're following the, the bait down. Once they start actually going down and feeding and settling, that's when I'll go back to using my standard mix, packing it tighter, and then I might look at going back to a window feeder then. Right, so there's a nice bite. Almost nearly taken the rod in. And that's been about 30 seconds after the feed has been in that. And if I'm gambling, I'm saying this is probably going to be the biggest fish that we've had so far. Certainly feels a bit heavier than the last. And what I've also done is brought the, the stop down that I use to probably about three, quarter, three quarters of an inch away. So again, fishing really nice and positive. And that's why this one's nearly taken the rod in. He looks to have just foul looked himself, possibly. So that's why I felt a bit heavier because he's just foul looked himself somehow on the top of his top of his back. Let's get another stamp skimmer. These are what we're after. So he must have been following the feeder down and swum, un swum under the hook length while it was falling and just hooked himself. That's why he nearly took the rod in. So I think my uh, tactic is uh, I'm just going to target the smaller stuff for a bit. I've put a bit of ground bait in with these maggot feeders as well. Maybe Bream will come closer in. Um, but I'm going to do this for the next few hours and then target the bigger stuff a bit later on. But I'm, I'm getting near enough a bite of chuck now. I've just switched over to worm to see if I can 
Pick out some bigger perch and roach maybe. But yeah, I'm gonna crack on now. And uh, see if we can get a decent net of fish. And there we go, there's another one on. That's the sort of stamp of fish I'm getting. So they're not big, but if I get plenty of them, uh, it should make a nice, nice weight up. Had a few bigger ones, but not sure. Not fish this water much. I'm not sure how many big perch in that are in here, but we'll see. So yeah, crack on now. See what happens. Well, as you can see, uh, it's not the most conventional way of feeder fishing, but I'm getting plenty of bites. I think I might have built a couple of pound up just flicking a little bomb out. We're getting nothing out in the middle, so I thought I'd give this a go. It's working. I'm just going to do it for the last five minutes. You never know. A couple of ounce might be the winner. So. Yeah, I think Aiden still might be in the lead, but like I said, it's going to be interesting. We've got, probably, we've got a decent net full in there. I think if it were quantity, that would be a brilliant match, it'd be me, but that's not how we uh, measure them. As you can see, bites are very, pretty much instant as it's going in. Just a single white maggot. Right, so we've just looked at another fish now with about a minute to go. So I think we'll probably call this the last one of the session. Just got to concentrate to get it up over the, the ledge that's in front of us here. Notice Tom's been catching a few small fish close late on, so he's, he's certainly had a lot more bites than me. So it'll be interesting to see who's got the most weight in it. Like I say, I've spent a lot of time today trying to get after these skimmers. So we'll just get the net under this one. And we'll call that the last of the session. So another nice little skimmer, not a massive fish, but again, like I said earlier, I want to try and target these. And I think switching onto the, the cage feeder, and putting sloppy ground bait through the mix has been the way to try and drag him into the peg. So we'll pop him in the net and then we'll compare what me and Tom have caught. Well, more weight than we thought. 12 pound, 13 ounce of a bit of a mixed bag. Two skimmers, a uh, load of roach and a load of perch. But Certainly done me on numbers of fish there. Good weight, 12, 13. More than I thought. Let's pop them back and we'll get mine out and see what, what I've caught. Right, so that's my final net of fish there. As you can see, I've spent more time going for skimmers. I managed to catch a few of them. All lovely stamp fish, but amazingly, Tom's beat me by three ounce. <laughs> These are worth 12 pound 10, so fair play to you, Tom, well done. Fair play, <laughs> thank you. I can't believe it, so I, I don't know what I owe him now, but either way, it's nice days fishing here. Like I say, I've learnt a few things targeting the skimmers and it's the first time I've seen the venue, so it's not a bad result, but a bit of a surprise there. So we'll get these popped back and then we'll do the closer. Right, so as you've seen there, that's the final nets of fish. I've had 12, 12 pound 10, Tom with 12 pound 13, so he's, he's ounced me out. I don't think I'll ever hear the end of it, so it'll be interesting to see what we do next. I think uh, with, winner gets the privilege of picking, so what we're thinking, Tom? I reckon method feeder on a commercial, but carp and bream. So that's his shout, so obviously that'll be the next one we do on this little challenge series. Hopefully I can give him a good hiding on that and not be embarrassed again like I've been today. So that's it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next episode.